Hello, my name is Miles Curry. In this lecture, we will give an overview of obtaining and compiling the MPAS Atmosphere source code. Before one even runs the MPAS model, one must first download the MPAS model source code and then compile that source code so it can be ran. This talk will give an overview of how to do just that. Furthermore, it will cover the prerequisite libraries that are needed to compile MPAS and go over options one can use when compiling. There are two ways of obtaining the model source code. The first involves downloading a tar file of an MPAS release, and the second is to clone the MPAS model repository using Git. Both ways certainly allow you to obtain the code. However, the second way comes with many benefits that the first does not, which we will go into. For the first and less encouraged way, navigate to the mpass-deb.github.io webpage and then click on the link to the MPAS atmosphere page. Then click on MPAS v 7.0 source code download. If a newer version has been released, of course, this won't be version 7.0 anymore, which will take you to this page. If you have not already done so, please fill out the user registration form. Doing so greatly helps us with development and gives us information into who is using our model and why. As well, if you have not already done so, please sign up for the mailing list. Doing so will keep you informed of new MPAS releases and future events, like the MPAS Worf Workshop and future tutorials. And once you've done both, click here. Then click on the archive file link here, which will take you to a GitHub release page. And if you scroll down, you'll find a link to the source code. Depending on your favorite flavor of archiver, download the zip or tar file, and you've obtained the MPAS source code. Downloading the source code as a tar or zip file is certainly one way to obtain the code, but it comes with a number of disadvantages. Each download only contains one version of the code, which means you have to download another tar file to use another release. It also makes it difficult for you to see if you have made any changes or edits to a source file. You may think you have a good memory, but you'll probably forget about the file you edited a few weeks ago not realizing that it was why your simulation is not running as you expected. Believe me, it's happened to me. Similar to point number two, there's not an easy way to update your code to a newer version. You'll just need to download a new tar file. And lastly, there's no way to get access of the history of code changes. These are messages that are added when features are committed to the repository via Git, which can help explain why a specific portion of code was added to the source code. Now onto the more encouraged way of downloading the MPAS source code, cloning the GitHub repository. There are a number of benefits of using Git, but first, how do you clone a repository? Well, first, navigate to the MPAS model repository and click code. Then, copy the repository URL to your clipboard. Be sure not to download the zip file or open with GitHub desktop, as those are not cloning. Once you have the MPAS model repository URL, open up your command line and run the git clone command as shown above. The command will take about 10 seconds to complete and will download the source code completely. When compared with downloading the tar file, obtaining the code via git has a number of advantages. Cloning the repository with git gives you access to all previously released versions of the code and easily allows you to update to a newer version when they are released. You will also be able to see the changes that you have made to the source code with the git status command. And you'll be able to easily save and revert back to a stable version if you do make changes that you'd like to keep. Git is a version control system after all. And lastly, you'll get experience using Git. Compiling MPAS requires a modern C and Fortran compiler. Any recent version of common compiler should be fine. And although it's 2021, and there is a 2018 and 2008 standard, MPAS only uses features which are from the 2003 Fortran standard. Unlike the C compilers, the Fortran compilers often lag behind the current standards. Thus, MPAS is written to meet the standard that is best supported by most compilers, which is currently 2003. This is not to say that the Fortran compilers are bad, but Fortran is simply not as popular as C and C++. As well as a Fortran compiler, you also need an implementation of MPI2. 
Depending on which features you need, there are two main ways of compiling the library's need for impasse. Both ways require the C and Fortran compiler and MPI2 implementation we talked about in the last slide. At a bare minimum, PNET CDF and 1.x versions of parallel I.O. is needed. However, if NetCDF 4 I.O. is needed, then there are a few more libraries that you will need to install, as you can see listed. You'll have to install these libraries on your own, but each library comes with their own instructions for installing. Look for the install or build files. And most libraries will also have a web page with build instructions. If your institution has any IT staff, reach out to them for help and see if they can install these libraries on your behalf. When you do install all the libraries from the previous screen, you will need to set the PNET CDF and PIO environment variables to point to the installation directory of each library. These variables show and pass where these libraries have been installed. We are not able to offer support for installing these libraries as we only support MPASS. However, the IOLib installation script is mighty helpful for installing these libraries and is a great example. It's best to use the script as a guide rather than running it in its entirety. You can find the IOLib installation script at the link on the screen, and at that link you will also find tar files of each library that are used by that script. For installations without NetCDF4 input and output, the following is an example of installing parallel NetCDF and PIO. Again, once both of these libraries have been installed, be sure to set the pnetcdf and pio environment variables to their installation directories. There are many different versions and releases of PIO. Some work better with MPASS than others. For ease of installation, use PIO version 1.7.1, which allows you to use the configure and make tools to install. And an example installation can be found on the previous slide. If you do need NetCDF4 input and output support, try PIO version 2.4.4 or another latest release. Again, see the IOLib installation script as an example. If you installed your libraries with NetCDF4 support, then you'll need to pass and include and link in information to MPASS. You can use the MPASS external libs and the MPASS external includes to do so. Again, see the IOLib installation as an example. Now, one last thing before we move into the commands for compiling MPASS. When you clone the MPASS model repository, you not only get the Atmosphere cores, but all other cores as well. Non-Atmosphere cores are developed by our colleagues at the Department of Energy. All cores are independent of each other and reside inside their own directory under source. But all cores use a set of shared infrastructure. As well, each core contains a registry file, which describes the variables, name list options, and input and output streams that each core uses. We'll have more information on the registry in another talk. When you compile MPASS, you must select a core to compile. If you want to build two cores, you, first, you must first clean the shared infrastructure before building another. There are two cores of MPASS Atmosphere, the Innate Atmosphere Core and then the Atmosphere Core. The Atmosphere Core is a non-hydrostatic model itself. The atmosphere core, on the other hand, is responsible for setting up meshes and simulations. This includes interpolating static fields, generating the vertical grid, and interpolating real or idealized data to the impasse pass grid. The init atmosphere and atmosphere cores are both developed at NCAR, while the other cores are developed by DOE. However, as noted, the development of infrastructure is done by both institutions. And at this time, the separate cores are not coupled. The command to compile MPASS is quite simple and takes the following form. The make command, followed by the desired compiler, and then the core you wish to build. MPASS can be compiled with a number of different compilers, and some are listed here. If you're interested in other compilers that can be built with MPASS, view the top-level targets of the main make file. After you specify your core, you can also specify a list of options, if you so desire. Be sure to set use PIO2 equals true if you have installed PIO2. Building both atmosphere cores looks like the following. First, build the init atmosphere core, then clean the shared infrastructure that's needed to compile the atmosphere core, and then finally compile the atmosphere core. Once you're done compiling each core, a message like the above will be produced and will let you know that the model compiled successfully. By default, MPASS is built with double precision reels. If you desire, you can build both MPASS cores in single precision with the precision equals single option in your make command. Doing so will speed up the model by approximately 
and decrease the size of the output files by half. If you want to run the model on double precision, but only want single precision output files, see the user's guide. The debug option is very useful when debugging segmentation faults and memory errors. It will hopefully generate a line number at where the error occurs, which may help you in debugging your problem. You'll need to clean the core before compiling it with debug. However, running it in debug mode significantly slows the model. So after you address the memory problem, be sure to clean and compile without debug equals true. If you're a Cheyenne or Casper user, or you're attending the MPAS tutorial, and you're actually participating in the participation sessions, you're in luck. There's a very, very easy way to install these libraries, which is at left. Once you do that, you can compile MPAS as normal. If you have trouble compiling MPAS Atmosphere, please feel free to reach out to us on our support form. And again, we cannot provide support for installing the libraries that MPASS uses, as we only support MPASS.